Hey guys, Mike here. Welcome back to another FL Studio Basics tutorial. This tutorial is going to cover customizing FL Studio to make it look better. This will not make anything perform better, but it might make you more inspired to use the program and feel more at home whilst you're using it. I have loads of other videos on the way, including a shortcuts video and also a workflow video for how to work faster in FL Studio. I'm also going to be doing more basic tutorials on how to use uh, specific VSTs and plugins inside FL Studio 2. So let's just get straight into this video. First thing you can do to help customize your FLPs is to just use a lot of color. You can see in all the FLPs I use in the other walkthroughs and for the original music, they're always pretty full of color, even though they're not that complex, I still color them and organize them. And this is a way to just make it fit sort of your uh, energy when you're making music. Some songs you want to use darker, more cold colors, other songs are very high energy and they require high energy colors to match it. It makes you feel it makes you connect with the sounds a little bit closer. It makes you want to work to make the music sound as good as the project looks, and that's always a good thing. So what you can do is anything that you can apply a color to, so all of these mixer slots, you can just click on them, click change color, and just change it to any color that you see fit. And you can also color entire groups like this. So if you just say auto color group, it will make it the color of the top of the group. And I just think that's a really cool way to customize it. To make these groups, all you need are two or more tracks. And if, if there is a track on its own and another track below it, you just right click and press G and it will group it with the track above. And this is a great way to just keep things together. But I'm gonna go into more of that stuff in the workflow video. So now that I've addressed color in the playlist, I'm just gonna go into the mixer. Cause a lot of you guys have been asking how do I make the mixer look like this? Because it doesn't come like this as standard. I think as standard, it opens up in one of these modes. So all you have to do is click here and select extra large. And the reason I do this is not because it actually lets me see things better. In fact, I get to see less uh, tracks this way. But what it allows me to do is have more control over dials. For instance, in this compact view, turning this uh, on so that you can see the extra volume and stereo properties, this dial here, for instance, on the vocal, this is a pan dial, so just sending it left or right, but this is a stereo separation dial. And you can see that tiny changes, tiny movements make it go a long way. Even if you hold control, it's still difficult to get exact values there. So what I do is on extra large, go into the same bus, so the vocal bus, you can see that you have much more control because the dial is just much larger and it's much easier to to like hone in the values you actually want to have as opposed to just kind of using guesswork. Another thing that makes my mixer look very different is on the view tab here, I have the track inspector on the left hand side. So initially when you load it up, it's on the right hand side. But in all the programs I use, so After Effects, Premiere Pro, Photoshop, Word, everything, all my menus are on the left hand side and it's the same in FL Studio. You know, your browser's on your left hand side and your menus are usually on the top or left. So I just choose it to be on the left hand side because it keeps it where all my other menus are. But to some people this just looks crazy, so you just do what you wanna do. This is how I customize it. Something else you can do is change the waveform display. So I'll just show you here. It regularly looks like this and I'll swap it. Spark, oh these sparks. Oh yeah, these sparks could warm the cold air that I. And what you can see is all the information has changed to these waveforms. So instead of seeing these bouncing, uh, VU or DB meters. Spark. Oh, these sparks. It just changes into a visual display and this can sometimes help you stay on top of the sonic information in your track. I know some people rely on seeing their music in that sort of display because it's just what helps you visually and that's what this video is about, what helps you visually understand what's going on in your project. And one last view option on the mixer is to turn colorful mixer on. So if it's off, Everything just looks a little bit dull and it comes back to the colors I was talking about earlier. Even on medium, it's not quite high enough. So I just put it all the way up to high and everything just looks doused in color and just looks really well, marvelous. It just looks great, doesn't it? Other ways to customize the playlist are to change what the actual tracks look like. So on the, on the playlist options tab, all the way up in the left hand corner, you can go into view and there's a few different things you can do here. So there's a few sort of strange things like turning the track uh, dividers on and off and that makes your project feel incredibly open but it's also really scary for me so i keep that turned on the whole time what i was wanting to show you was view behind clips now this one's really interesting so i'm just going to show you the different options one option is nothing and you can see that all the color from behind clips disappears and there's absolutely no distinction between the pattern color and the actual color of the playlist but what you can do as well other options i'll just show you all of them actually if you select plain all the bars disappear if you select this one, 
you get sort of like a halfway house. You can see the bars, you can see the colour and it looks okay. And the last two are a bit crazy. So you've got glass, which just makes it look really strange. Some people, they probably think this looks cool. I think it looks a bit, a bit crazy. And then you have aqua, which is very similar as well. If I'm working with automation, I select nothing. And if I'm working the rest of the time just on my project, I select this middle one so that I can still have a very colorful project. But the rest of the time, I just select this mode so that I can still see everything that's going on. Other options include going into the view menu at the top and selecting the background and then setting your own image. So FL Studio has some backgrounds you can choose from, which are pretty good. But if you have your own image, for instance, I'm just gonna use the background of Sparks. All of a sudden, if I got rid of this, you can see that that's my own custom background there. Otherwise it would just be gray, which I actually don't mind at all. Um, I have no preference for that background color. Back at the top left of the playlist options, you have the view grid color, and you can actually change the color of everything behind the grid. So in this case, I'm gonna choose like a very, very light blue color. And you can see that everything behind my clips has turned this color and it looks terrible, so I don't do this. I've seen other people using this successfully, so it's just personal preference there. One last thing you can do to try and customize the feel of FL Studio would be to create your own groups inside the channel rack. So if you just select as many as you want, all your instruments say, and press Alt and G, give them a name like instruments. And then what you have here is instead of just having all audio automation and unsorted, you also have instruments. So that's everything that I do in FL Studio to customize the workspace the way I like it. But if there's anything you guys do and you wanna let others know about it or you think I could benefit from it, just let me know down in the comments below and also let me know what other sorts of basic videos you'd like because there's so many different video ideas that I could do, but obviously I wanna do ones that are useful for you guys. So if you just let me know in the comments or across on the Facebook page, that'd be great. Thank you very much for watching this video. See you guys in the next one. Your life